Hello everyone. Uh, very good morning. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we'll be starting the webinar in next couple of minutes. Thank you. Okay, uh, good morning, David. How are you? Good morning, doing just fine, thanks. Thanks, uh, David. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar on Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. Uh, I, I hope you are uh, staying safe and healthy. My name is Noor Basha, a Marketing Director at Pinwire Technologies, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. As you all know, uh, today's topic for the session is accelerate your innovation with Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. In the next 20-25 uh, uh, minutes, uh, we will, along with David, discuss how D365 and Power Platform tools can help your business drive automation, enhance intelligence, and maximize your business outcomes. So before we get started, let me highlight a few housekeeping items. Uh, during the webinar, uh, please feel free to post questions and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end. Uh, we are also recording this session and we'll be sharing the recording in next 24 to 48 hours. So with that, let me introduce you to today's session speaker, uh, uh, Mr. David, uh, who is the director of uh, for Dynamics 365 practice at Pinwire Technologies. And he's been in the industry for the last 20 years uh, working on different uh, CRM platform. So without further delay, I would like to hand it over to David to take uh, from here. David, over to you. Thank you, Noor. Hi, everyone. I'm David. I'm excited to be able to share uh, just how Microsoft Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform are now working together in a way that, uh, we've, that we've never had before. It's opening up all sorts of possibilities for us. And uh, make, makes me uh, quite pleased. And so we're going to be going through and talking about that. I'm going to actually be spending most of the day today not in PowerPoint and actually showing you uh, in the products themselves how it works. And then as Noor suggested, if you do have questions, just go ahead and put it in the, in the uh, question function there in, the, in Zoom and uh, we'll touch on those at the end. Okay. So Dynamics 365. Um, many of you have at least uh, heard of it or aware of it or you maybe even been using it. Um, there's many components or applications of it. Here on the left side of uh, uh, the screen, um, I like to call this the back office, but many people refer to it as ERP. Uh, you got your typical finance and supply chain HR kind of functionality. Um, what I call the front office, uh, often people refer to as CRM, you got your sales service and marketing functionality, your project management functionality. And then tying that all together, we have what's called the common data service, uh, which is a, basically a, a, an ability to share data between all of these applications. And then the power platform. And so um, the power platform is made up of components as well. We'll be talking about Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI specifically today. Um, we, but you also have the component of virtual agents, AI, um, that can take advantage of things like machine learning and, and things like that for doing chatbots and such. Okay. So this is what we're going to be talking about today is how all the, these pieces fit together. Uh, because I had to pick 
some uh, area to, to demonstrate this with. I'm going to actually be spending the demo portion on the left hand side of the screen over here in the back office and we'll talk about how they interact with these things but uh, the front office uh, also interacts with all these as well so uh, just wanted to explain that. Okay so I'm going to switch over into my demo system here and so this is Dynamics 365 uh, the, the finance and operations side of Dynamics 365. And if you've never seen it before, essentially what we have is on my desktop here is a series of what Microsoft re refers to as workspaces. These workspaces are designed to do a particular business process. And because I'm logged in here with a, a administrative access, I've got access to, to all of these workspaces. And we'll show you some examples of these in, in just a little bit. But since this is a really a discussion on the, on the Power Platform and how it works with Dynamics 365, I wanted to start first over here at powerbi.com. So if you've never used Power BI, um, you could certainly just go out to powerbi.com and you could use it for free. You could connect to any data source, even if it's just an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, in this case, I've got my data source set up as my Dynamics 365 uh, environment. And so I could go and access um, all that rich data there. And if I go and I take a look at this, if I look at my workspace here, I've got a series of dashboards uh, that I've been, you know, playing with out here in, in uh, Power BI. And just to show you an example of it, Power BI is just a way of visualizing your data in all sorts of uh, nice ways. And if I go scrolling down, you can see, you know, the kind of metrics that, that uh, you know, are available. So I could build um, these visualizations out here easily in Power BI, it's super simple to do. I could also connect it to other data sources. So not just Dynamics 365. So if I have legacy applications out there, if I wanna connect it to my salesforce.com uh, application and connect it to my you know, ERP in the background and have those data joined in one single view, that's the things that you could go ahead and, and do in, in Power BI, okay? But if I go and I take a look at Dynamics 365 now, this is where we could actually start to, to see Power BI in, embedded within Dynamics 365. And so to show you an example of this, I'm gonna come down into a workspace here. Um, I'll, I'll choose an HR one, Compensation Management. Okay. And so this just um, now enables me to manage my compensation for my employees and su such, but right embedded within my workspace here, is my analytics. And so this is Power BI uh, loading up here directly within uh, Dynamics. And I could go ahead and make any of these things uh, larger if I wanted to. So if I wanted to go and analyze my, my hourly and salary data uh, by my various legal entities, I could do that. And I could show my data, you know, in, both in the visualization and as, the, uh, as a table here side by side. And there's always the ability to go and add in filters and, and things like that. So very easy to use your, your Power BI data directly um, within uh, Dynamics. Um, and the, the data doesn't have to be pretty graphs. You know, if I just want to quickly go and see who's on my HMO plan, I could click in the box and see, you know, who's on that or who's, who's participating in the 401k. I've got all that information. Remember, I could go and filter this. And then I could also, you know, take this data out to Excel or anything else to, to go and work with. Okay. So that's an example of a Power BI embedded uh, directly in there. If I show you an example that's a little bit more operational, uh, let's go and take a look at work order management. Okay, this is where I can go and look at my various work orders. Um, one of the functions of Dynamics, as you'll see, is that it often will, will surface any kind of exception. So you can see work orders that have faults or work orders that are delayed. And I could just click on these and drill directly into them and work with them. And with my back button on my browser, I could go right back again. But if I look at the analytics here, these are analytics associated with my work order management. Here's Power BI again, coming up with all the various uh, metrics that are available. And um, likewise, before we could drill into these, we can make them bigger, et cetera. And so they're, they're, uh, they're very, very powerful. Okay. So that's kind of how Power BI works. What we can do though, is if, if there's any of these metrics that we don't want or we want to change, in my options here, I have the ability to go and open up either report catalog or a dashboard catalog. And when I do that, this just goes out to Power BI and says, okay, which dashboard, which visualizations do you want? 
So if I built up a dashboard in Power BI that was taking data from Salesforce and taking data from my HR system and taking data from Dynamics 365, and mashing it all together in just the way that I want to see it, I could then bring it in here to Dynamics 365 and have it be displayed natively. Okay, so that's kind of the, the tie in there with, with Power BI. Okay. The next thing I thought I'd show you um, would be is Power Apps. And so if you're not familiar with Power Apps, Power Apps is a, is a great low code or no code tool to kind of drag and drop and build apps. And these apps, while they, they are mobile apps, they'll run on Android and, and, and iOS, they're not necessarily limited to your mobile devices. You could actually use them in a full browser. You could use them within Dynamics 365. And so I thought I'd show you an example here. Um, and so another workspace in here in Dynamics is our employee self-service workspace. This is where employees can go in and change their information about their employee record, and they could look up their payroll, and they could do their expense reports and their timesheets. And you can see I've got a timesheet in progress out here. It's got 24 hours currently posted on it. If I go and I drill into this particular timesheet, um, you know, I can see I've got a couple of different entries in here, you know, for various hours spread out. And it's like, that's fine, it's typical timesheet functionality. Now, some organizations have more advanced timesheet requirements. Maybe if you're a law firm and you bill in six minute increments or something like that, you might look at the out of the box Dynamics 365 timesheet and say, well, that doesn't work for me. And, and so rather than having to go and create a customization and making it do something um, you know, that Microsoft didn't envision it to do, what we could do instead is we could come up to this little button here. This is Power Apps. And we could actually add a Power App. Okay? Adding a Power App is super easy. You just fill out a quick little form and, and do it. But what I did is I just I added a Power App here called Timesheet. And this is the Power App loading up and running right here within Dynamics 365. It recognizes who I am. And then you'll see, you know, I've got my actual Timesheet entries in here. Okay, and so I could go and I could work with any of them uh, that I that I had. And then likewise, if I wanted to, you know, because the timer was the whole reason why I wanted this functionality, I could add a timer in here and it could quickly, you know, start recording, you know, how much time I'm spending on a particular particular item. Okay, you'll notice the total time in there is 24. That's exactly the same data that I have out here. Okay, so what this enables us to do is to modify the functionality for our users very rapidly. I mean, an app like this, you could build in, in like a day or two um, of time and uh, deploy it out into Dynamics 365. And it doesn't affect your ability to do any upgrades or anything like that. So it's um, an absolutely great way to quickly expand the functionality of Dynamics 365 through those, those power apps. Okay. Okay. So you'll have this ability to add power apps all throughout the system for any kind of functionality that you might want to do. Uh, great. Another example of it is uh, if you're on a sales order and you quickly want to do a package track, you know, maybe you shipped at FedEx, maybe it was UPS, maybe it was DHL. Well, with a power app, it could quickly just go and grab that tracking number, check who it was, go out and grab the information, and return it back. And so the user doesn't have to switch into a different browser or copy and paste tracking numbers, all those kind of things. So, so power apps are a great tool for, for uh, streamlining uh, various functions. Okay. Now the Power Apps, we could also go ahead and just build them directly into our workspaces as well. And so I've got a Power App down here called Corporate Communications. And when I click on it, you'll notice there that's the Power App loading up. If I didn't tell you it was a Power App, you wouldn't even have known it. You would have thought it was just standard Dynamics 365. But here I've got this app running where I could go and work with uh, you know, my, my company uh, data. Uh, if I come back here and take a look at an, another example, here's one called telehealth. Um, this is one that we, a power app that we, we did for one of our clients. And if I just go and I change the date here uh, back into June, uh, this is essentially a kind of doctor's office kind of functionality where you could do appointment scheduling. You could look at, you know, various uh, records. You could search for your patients. You could, you know, write prescriptions and things like that. And so um, this is functionality that, that our customer needed. They, want, they had Dynamics, they wanted to expand it. And so we could add that doctor's office specific functionality into Dynamics. It's a fully embedded there working with the same data and um, allows us to, 
uh, you know, expand dynamics without customizing it. Okay. And so that's a, a huge benefit of, of the Power Platform and Power Apps. And then uh, the next, the last one I want to talk about was Power Automate. Now, Power Automate is probably the one that people are least familiar with. Um, and probably it's the most powerful of, of everything within the Power Apps. And so Power Automate has to do with business process automation. And you see, I've got a workspace here direct working just with my business process automation. And so uh, within here, I've got uh, you know, various links I could go and work with, but up here in my options, you'll see these options all throughout Dynamics 365, an area here for Pot Power Automate. This is where we could go and create a new flow. And if you're not familiar with that term flow, um, you could think about it, it's, it's sort of like workflow in the old, kind of the old school way of thinking of workflow. It could be a step-by-step -step series of, of, of tasks that have to happen but there's also a, an automation aspect to it. Um, if you hear the term RPA, that's, that's short for robotic process automation. Essentially means that tasks that used to be done by humans, we can now um, automate through uh, ro robots. And these are not, you know, when we think about robots, we often think about assembly lines, you know, a, an automaker, like Tesla who uses Dynamics 365, it's got these big robotic arms that are pu putting cars together and such. And that is certainly how robotics has evolved over the last couple of decades. But robots now can do things that, that office workers have been doing. They could look up things on a web page. They could copy and paste. They could um, you know, create formulas in an Excel sheet. They could update data from an Excel sheet into a journal entry uh, in an ERP system. Um, all those kind of things that that workers have been doing that that are not difficult to do, but it's kind of it's taken a brain to be able to do a sequence of tasks and to have uh, you know if this then do that and uh, but if it's if it's this then do something else. That kind of logic we can now enable with Power Automate. So let me just drill direct, directly into my Power Automate flows here. And if you want to go and explore Power Automate. Uh, it's, it's, here's the URL, you can just go out to it. Once again, Microsoft allows you to go and try it out for free. Um, but I've got a couple of flows that are defined here. Uh, one really simple one, a scheduled one, this one just goes out to the internet and grabs the latest exchange rates and updates my data for me. Okay, so that runs on a, on a daily basis and uh, you know, we'll go and, and do that task for me. But I've also got a couple of tasks here that are run on demand. And these are month-end tasks. So as part of my month-end fin closing the financial period, I would have to go and do some calculations on, you know, my warranty uh, liabilities. And, you know, that calculation can be quite complex. It might have to take data from uh, not only from our financial system, but from our, uh, you know, our warranty system or our asset management system. And so uh, if you're not using Dynamics 365, that might be multiple systems that you have to combine that data into to do a calculation to come up with a value that then creates a journal entry. And so that's something that we could automate as part of our month end process. It could be run on demand uh, with supervision from our accountants. And same, same thing here with our reconciliation calculations. And so this is a process you run every single month. It's the same every single month. Um, so that, that logic can be can be automated. Now, if you think about these flows, think about them as, as a, you know, a, a super macro. Um, basically, you're going to record the steps, um, whether you're going out into a browser and opening up a website and copying and pasting data or looking up data or opening up a, another system and searching for information, copying and pasting, whatever it might be. Um, that macro can record those steps to quickly create your flow then you could build in your kind of logic into that. Okay. And to get started with this stuff, you actually have templates out here. And so Microsoft creates these, these templates. There's, there's a lot of them. And uh, essentially, you know, you kind of go and see just various things that you could go and do. And each one of these boxes represents a different application that's being, that's being used. Okay. So, um, you know, a very simple one here is, you know, get a, get a push notification when you receive an email from your boss. This one kind of cracks me up, but uh, essentially what it says is it'll monitor your, 
your, your inbox and it will text you uh, if your boss emails you. And so I, I think that one's kind of funny, uh, but maybe what you do instead is you, you know, if a, you have a, a, an inbox in your customer service or whatever, and if you get a, a, a service request from a customer that has a very, you know, highest SLA, uh, in that case, yeah, you want to send a text out to the customer service manager to let them know, or the account and write manager to know that there's an issue kind of thing. Uh, and so this is a, a task that Power Automate could be running in the background 24 hours a day and uh, you, uh, you don't have to have a person worrying about that kind of stuff. Okay. And so um, Microsoft, you know, if we look at Power Automate here, they have tools to help you get, get started and, and such. And also WinWire, what we could do is help you build your first Power Automate flow. We can help you build your first Power App. Um, we can help you build your first Power BI. And, um, and then it, you become self-sufficient as you start learning how to use, uh, use the tools. Okay. People often ask about pricing. And so I'll just I'll head that question off in advance here. Uh, licensing, and, and of course, you, you, could, you could be a PhD in Microsoft licensing and still not be an expert in it. It's, a, it's an ever-changing landscape. But just to give you an example of things, if you're looking at Power, Power Automate, these robotic flows, um, these flows, it, it, it could be licensed two different ways. It could be on a per user basis. So if you have only a limited number of users that are going to be using these flows, it's $15 per month for per user. Okay. So if you have three users using flows, uh, you're looking at $45 a month. Okay. Pretty, pretty inexpensive investment in an automation technology. You could also get five process flows for unlimited users. So you can have your whole organization running these flows and it's only $500 a month. Okay. So the ROI that you could get by building these things is, is, is an absolute slam dunk. And so we're, we are excited to be able to help you guys do that. Whether you're using Dynamics 365 or not, you could use the power platform in your organization. And it's a great way to kind of get the, get the taste of what, this, what you can do now with, uh, with Microsoft. Okay. All right, um, at that point, that's everything I wanted to show you around Dynamics 365. I thought we'd hand it over to, to Noor to uh, take us through any questions that you might have. Thanks, David. Uh, thanks for the quick session. I think that was really helpful. I think uh, certainly, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Dynamics 365 and Power Platform can really help uh, drive automation as well as enhance intelligence and maximize the business outcomes. Uh, yes, I have a few questions. So let me just take this first question coming from Michael. Uh, where he asks, uh, are Power BI licenses included with Dynamics 365? Yes. So if you're using, if you're a Dynamics 365 customer, you could use Power BI to connect to your Dynamics 365 data source, and there is no additional licensing required. You don't need to purchase Dynamics, you don't need to purchase Power BI licenses to use it with Dynamics 365. So that's a huge benefit. Now, if you, if you use Power BI to connect to your Dynamics 365 data, but you also want to connect it out to another data source, let's say salesforce.com or some other application, in that case, you do need a license to connect to that third party data source. Okay, so it's just an add on license. Um, and I, I don't know the cost of it off the top of my head, but uh, it's, it, it can be added in there. Okay, thanks. Thanks, David. So uh, the other question from John is how does, uh, sorry, uh, one sec. Uh, like, is there any technical knowledge specifically required to build Power Apps? So Microsoft is goal with Power Apps is to make the, the it's so that it's it's a tool that's used by power users and not necessarily IT programmers and such. It's trying to put the power in the hands of business and and not have to rely on I, IT. And so the idea here is that you sh only very little technical knowledge is required. Um, but I'll say that in practice, it helps to be technically minded. And so a power user is a good way of thinking about it. So a power user with a little bit of coaching and training um, should be able to build their, their own power apps. Um, and it, it's essentially, it's a, it's a drag and drop. What you see is what you get kind of tool that you could build these apps. Uh, but as you 
tend to build them, you're going to, you know, you're going to have to troubleshoot them a little bit. And, um, you know, you're going to get stuck on the first one that you're building. And so uh, Windwire is very happy to, to work with you. Microsoft also offers what are called app in a day workshops. And this is where you just go to the workshop and they're all virtual at the moment. And so you can essentially build your first app in a day uh, and you get a good exposure of the tool and how it works. Um, but of course, uh, Windwire, we're very happy to help you build your, your first couple of power apps. And uh, as, as, you, as you get the first two under your belt, you know, power app three, four, and five, you, you could completely do on your own. So that's kind of the goal here with, uh, with that tool. Thanks, uh, David. So the other question, question from Anshuman is, how does Dynamics 365 manage working with periodic release, uh, release updates and functionalities uh, by ERP packages like Oracle, Cloud, or even SAP? Yep, that's a great question. So uh, in, in Dynamics, what happens is, um, we're now actually on a single version of Dynamics. So there's no, you know, more, you know, this, this would have been version eight of Dynamics, but there's no more version eight, nine, or 10. It's now continually updated by Microsoft. There are um, many releases on a, on a monthly basis, but those, those releases, they get um, deployed, and, but they're deployed when they're not turned off, or they're deployed turned off. And so, um, if I go and I look at this in my, my workspace for feature management, I could go and see um, every single release uh, in here that, uh, that Microsoft has, has put out here, but not necessarily everything is enabled. There might be tools in here that I might say, well, I don't really need that particular feature, so I'm not going to enable it. My users aren't going to use it, so I could just basically ignore it. But if there's something here that I want to be able to use, all I have to do is to come in here and say, enable it now, and it will go and appear there. Okay. So in this case, it's very easy to get uh, the new functionality. You never fall behind, You're not 10 years behind on the version of your, your ERP system. Uh, typically what happens is people don't upgrade to the latest version and then pretty soon the, the, the version they're on is so old that, that it's not even supported by the vendor anymore. And so those kind of issues are now gone because we're on a single version and it's updated continuously. You always have the latest security you know, updates and, and things like that. So you don't have to worry about your system being vulnerable. And then you could just turn on the features that you, you want. Okay. Some companies, when they look at this, they say, well, we don't want to turn on features every month. That's too much, but maybe twice a year, we do a, a review of all the latest features and we choose, you know, the, the 20 or so that we want to deploy. And we teach our users about what those, what they do and we turn them on and it's, and that's it. And we do it again in six months. So you have, uh, you have some flexibility as to when you actually turn them on. Thanks, David. Thanks. Thanks for that. So the other question is, uh, how is Power Automate licensed? Yeah. So Power Automate, a uh, couple, two different ways. It's, it could be per user per month, and it starts at $15 per user per month. Or um, you could get unlimited users uh, for $500 a month, and that's for five process flows. And so, uh, you know, you could combine these licensing methods to determine the best way for your organization. But overall, just based upon those numbers, you could see it's not a, uh, it's not something that you, you need a giant CapEx budget for. Um, you know, you could actually just jump in and get started right away. And we recommend, you know, especially with Power Automate, you know, when you're talking about automation, it's the hardest thing is just getting started. So pick a business process that's causing particular pain and let's talk about how we can automate that one business process. And then what I think you'll see is that when we, uh, you know, we could turn around a, a working prototype of that very quickly, the, the ROA, uh, it, it becomes very apparent. So happy to work with you on that. Thanks, David. I know we are almost uh, into the session, but I just wanted to take one last question. Uh, can you just uh, uh, explain how common data service uh, is integrated between these uh, uh, power, proto, power Automate applications as well as uh, the front office as well as the back office applications? Sure. So the common data service is sitting right here. And so it is its own database and it, it is populated with what Microsoft calls entities. And so an entity, um, if you think about a customer, 
over here on the finance and operations side, you might, a customer might be, you know, a, it might be called a customer, but over here in CRM world, um, it might be called an account. Um, it represents the same data, but you've got different databases here. The common data service basically knows and understands the data model in all the underlying applications that are used in the dynamic suite and can pass data between them. So if you make an update to a customer record over here on the, on the front office, it also will go and update the customer record in the back office, okay? And it's done automatically within seconds. Nobody has to think about it and such. And then this common data service here, it's also used across this bit. So that's why when I was updating my timesheet in the Power App, it was also you know, completely using the same data that we were using over here in the finance and operations side of things or the HR side of things. It's, um, or even the project service automation side of things because it's using that common, common data source here. And what's also uh, beautiful about this model is that if you have something that's not Dynamics, and I've used this example a couple of times like salesforce.com, salesforce.com can connect to the common data service. And so when you talk about a single version of the truth, you could have your, your back office customer information being updated in sync with your salesforce.com implementation, okay? And so that's the kind of thing that, that we as Windwire like specialize in uh, helping customers get to that point by, by leveraging the Dynamics platform. You don't necessarily have to leverage the entire Dynamics platform. This is not an all or nothing kind of situation, but you could pick and choose individual applications in here, or you could just pick the Power Platform components of it and enable it in your environment. Um, obviously, the more you, you, you choose, the, the more the synergies you're going to get, um, but you could start slowly and, and, and move that direction over time. Thanks, David. Uh, one just last question. I know I think this is uh, uh, one last from the user. So can multiple users open uh, and edit the same application simultaneously? Yes, they can. Um, there is there is going to be you know your database um, you know functionality behind the scenes that will go and tell you if if uh, somebody made a change to a record that you had open, it's going to say the information on your screen is now out of date. Um, do you want to refresh it? And in that case, you know it gives the user the opportunity to refresh the record, see the changes, and then make additional changes to it. So it doesn't happen very often, but um, it does protect you from having two different people, um, you know, making conflicting updates to a, a common record. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, David, for taking us through the quick overview of D365 and Power Platform, and most importantly, taking us through that entire demo and the questions. Uh, again, thanks everyone for joining this. Uh, a quick session on Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. And you, in case if you guys have any questions, please feel free to write to us at marketing at binwire.com. And we'll be more than happy to uh, take uh, those questions offline. Uh, just a quick note, like we have our next webinar coming up on Azure Synapse Analytics and Power BI. So for people who don't know what Azure Synapse is, a, a limitless analytics service uh, that uh, helps bring together both enterprise data warehousing and the big data analytics. So we will learn a lot more on Azure Synapse with a, a quick customer story as well. So stay tuned and uh, looking forward to host you in the next session. Thanks, David. Thank you, guys.